Let's get in close right here. It's World Frog Day, in case you didn't know and you're just waking up. Andrew Cotter, Senior Biologist, Vancouver Aquarium. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, who is this right here you're holding? This is one of our female red-eyed tree frogs that we have at the aquarium. Look and at this. Now, how old is this frog right here? She's probably about four, four years old now. Size is uh, so small and handling, uh, you're using the gloves, not just anyone can handle the frogs, right? That's right, because frogs breathe through their skin, so anything that we have on our skin can be transferred to them, so we do this for their own safety. Real nice, and the uh, orange feet, is this particular to this uh, species uh, that, that we're looking at right now? Uh, not particularly, there are some other species of this genus that have orange feet, um, but uh, these particular guys have these this color feet. And how can you tell if this frog's in a good mood? Because we woke it up early today to participate in World Frog Day. Well, the interesting thing about red-eyed tree frogs is that they're actually nocturnal, so they sleep during the day. So she's actually supposed to be sleeping now. So when I went into the aquarium this morning, they were all awake. So they, uh, I actually just disturbed her from her slumber. <laughs> Well, she's participating quite nicely here for the morning show. We're going to learn all about frogs throughout the morning. World Frog Day, we'll celebrate it. Of course, you can go to the aquarium and do the exact same. Uh, more to come here on BT. We'll talk chili peppers right after the break. Yes, we're still talking about World Frog Day. Andrea Cotter, Senior Biologist of Vancouver Aquarium, is here. A new friend inside the tank. Uh, tell us about this frog here. So this guy, like I said, is called a dying blue poison dart frog. And the reason why it's called dying is because they say that local um, people used to dye parrot feathers and skin with the pigment from this frog. Of course they did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes complete sense. <laughs> uh, I I'm amazed by the size of these frogs. Of course, we're seeing the close-up right now, but... Uh, is this full size? What is the life transformation of the frog? How small and then how big do they get? So this is a full size adult frog. Uh, we also call them the tinctorious species. Um, and they, their tadpoles are probably about the size of your smallest fingernail. And then when they metamorph, after maybe a month or so, two months, they, their um, juvenile stage is about the same size. So it's basically a mini version of this guy, if you can imagine that. And we've left this frog specifically in the tank because when it comes to handling, some frogs are a little different. This one's squirmy? Yeah, so this one is just a little bit um, not as used to being handled. And this one is also a poison frog, like I said. So uh, they can uh, emit a poison, which you obviously wouldn't want to ingest. No, I might want to stay away <laughs> from that here on World Frog Day as we celebrate it. Uh, well, you're going to be here in the 8 o'clock hour and introduce us uh, to the great work being done at the aquarium. We'll learn more about frogs and this guy right here just a beautiful color on it Andrea thank you no problem thanks for having us all right we'll take a quick break it's World Frog Day in case you didn't know and you've been watching Andrea uh, Cotter senior biologist from the aquarium is back and this frog bigger than the ones we saw earlier do tell this frog is called a cane toad and it's quite possibly the biggest toad on the planet <laughs> Now, what's the difference between toad and frog? So it's kind of one of those things where uh, all toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. And what's the distinction to get uh, in that club? So usually, not there is some exceptions, but usually toads have more of a drier skin, as you can kind of see on this guy, and they usually have some sort of wart on them, which this guy also has. And that's why you're handling with gloves. Are you always handling with uh, the frogs with gloves? Yes, um, and that's because they breathe through their skin. So anything that we have on our hands, uh, they can also get through their skin, and that's not very good for them. And what's unique about this species, uh, specifically when we look at BC and endangered species of frogs out there? So this guy has a very similar story to uh, our local invasive species, the bullfrog. So this guy in particular is invasive to Australia. And the problem with invasive species of frog, like the bullfrog or this guy, is that they eat local species of frog, like the Oregon spotted frog, which we work closely with. And so they'll pretty much eat everything and anything. So from eggs to tadpole to the actual frog, which is bad for our local frogs. So you gotta keep a close eye on them. And with the great work being done at the aquarium, maybe for spring break, you're gonna head down and you can learn about it. There are two specific endangered species that are being repopulated at the aquarium? That's right. So we work with the Oregon spotted frogs, which we've worked with since 2010, and the northern leopard frogs since 2013. And we, up to this point, since 2010, we've released about 16,000 tadpoles back to the wild. Wow. Yeah. So good work being done, great chance to learn. Is he happy right now? Is he eaten, by the way? Not yet, but later today he will. <laughs> okay, good. We'll feed him. We'll keep on the good side of this frog. Uh, Andrea, thanks so much for hanging out no this problem. morning. Uh, there you can find the information about the aquarium if you want to take the family down, especially this week. Uh, we'll take a break. Watch this. Coming up right after. You know this frog's watching. Stay tuned.